Welcome, one and all, to another edition of the Devo Show with Luby here on the Five Reasons Sports Network, brought to you by Water Cleanup of Florida. The weather's always fun here in South Florida. That does not help our homes or offices. What does help your home or office when there's water or fire issues is Water Cleanup of Florida, 954-579-0356, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They are there for you. They were there for my wife and myself with our townhouse. They were fantastic every step of the way. I'm a guy, if you can't tell, that gets neurotic and anxious about things. It was one of the only times in my life where we had any issues with the home where I was able to stay calm, cool, and collected. And it wasn't me. It was them. They'll do the same thing for you. 954-579-0356. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Well, it's easy when you have over 60 years of combined experience between Michael, Robert, George, their entire team, and you have licensed certified contractors on staff you're able to not only fix the issues, but make them look brand new in a way most companies aren't. They can. Water Cleanup of Florida. Check them out on their website or at their website, wcufl.com. Check them out on their socials at Water Cleanup FL. Water Cleanup of Florida. If you have the schmutz, believe me, they have the guts. The Miami Hurricanes haven't had lots of guts the last few years. They did put out a gutsy performance against the Florida State Seminoles, including their young freshman quarterback. Not sure how good he is, but he has a lot of heart. We talked about the Canes keeping it close versus the Florida State Seminoles. My Florida State Seminoles going on to 10-0. and 0. The rest of the college football world. Some Dolphins, as we sit here uh, in the bye week or post-bye week. So, lots of football with a man, John Jimmy, who covered college football for over 20 years for ESPN and now is and has been an analyst for CBS4 for years for the Miami Dolphins. One only John Kinjemi as we go pick skin playbook on the Miami Dolphins, the Americans, football all around, the Diva Show with Luby here on the Five Reasons Sports Network. The UMFSU game, now that was big over the weekend. Uh, Miami covers the point spread. They were competitive. Uh, I, I, I don't like to uh, put it this way, but there, there's no real delicate way of putting it. Uh, the poly man pointed this out to me. Uh, play calling, I mean, why call plays like pussies when you're 14-point underdogs on the road to a team that you haven't beaten in a couple of years, your arch rival, have a chance to maybe salvage uh, some dignity for the season? And yet think about this. How, how, how far have the Canes tumbled where you're taking solace and uh, moral victory type of sentiments away uh, from a game that you lost? Well, and here's my thing. Uh, again, I, I'm, uh, we can bring, I mean, Jimmy's ready. We can bring him on. I mean, I'm sure he can. Let's bring him on. In this but, and I'll finish why why are we too. babbling about this? We don't know anything I mean, about I'll finish this. my thought, too. Bring him an expert. Yeah. His, who knows what the hell he's talking about. He did college football for ESPN for well over 20 years. Played at the highest levels of college football. Um, but being the FSU fan and everyone, you guys prodded me to make an, a, a, a pick. And, of course, everyone's like, you might as well pick. I wasn't going to pick Miami. I would have laid out, which is what that game showed you. Yeah, Miami covered in the end. But it didn't feel like a Miami cover. And the second half, FSU did take control. So, like, to me, that was the kind of game you just stay out of. Like, Miami's playing like shit, but FSU's not dominating like they should at this point of the year for number four team. I wouldn't have made a pick. But you guys made me go FSU. Or you made me make a pick, and I would have taken FSU. And, look, if uh, the offense, and if Norvell and Travis didn't want to sabotage their own offense, they would have covered. Like, the, the way that they're calling the plays inside the red zone makes zero sense. Like, again, I say this every week. McDaniel Norvell must have conference calls all week. How can we stress our fans out? What do you? What yes. plays do you want to try that we don't think is going to work? But fuck it. We'll win anyways. So let's try those plays. And then when they don't work, everyone's stressed. But we win and we can celebrate like it was last second when it didn't need to be last second. Both coaches are doing the same thing every week. And, it, and I'm a fan of both teams, so it's really stressing me out. But... Like, that's what that game felt like to me. Miami's played like garbage, but they that's what's weird about Miami. Like, they make this game their Super Bowl when it shouldn't be. Like, they shouldn't have six wins. They well, they eight. didn't in terms of the spread cover, which I think it went off 14 and a hook, which yeah, yeah. still wouldn't have been enough, though. But that, that touchdown was pretty lucky. That 85 yard pass play yeah, was should, should have been yeah. just as easily could have been a pick but anyways, return for So, what score. I'm saying for my, but Miami fans are like celebrating, and I'm like, it's fine. You played close, you showed signs, but what about the last month? Like, that's what's weird to me. And when I was Canes fans all week, we're like, well, we're going to win. I'm like, but wouldn't that piss you off? Like, why don't you dominate Georgia Tech? Why don't you dominate Virginia? Why don't you beat NC State? If you can go and beat FSU at FSU, which they didn't, 
What happened the other games? Like, I understand you have to build a culture and all that shit, but that's why we, I liked what Norvell was doing. They started 0-4 that year, and then they finished 5-3, and three, and they kept games close. And then the next year, they won 10, 10. Like, every year they built. To me, crystal ball doesn't feel – their defense is better. The offensive line is vastly better. But the offense still sucks, and they don't have a quarterback. Emory Williams, that guy is all the hurt in the world. I'll mm. give that guy a ton of credit because he's not good. Like, he can't throw, he can't run, he, but he has heart. I, give, I wish my, all my players had the heart that kid has, but he's still not good. Um, like, that's why you the know offense what? was that. He's not Guys, good. Like, the, yeah, the that could have gone on until 9 o'clock, John. I'm glad you had you, No, you, no, you, no. You, no. Uh, and Luby's, <laughs> Luby's right, but the there. Miami Hurricanes are the NCAA version of the New York Jets. <laughs> okay. they Maybe. actually are. So, they really are. so you look at the way the canes have played their defense has been really it's good. good it's good throughout the entire year especially their front seven yes you know they've had some injuries in the back end that have held them back and they have that free safety that takes a personal foul penalty every game but other than that <laughs> um they they are they are a mirror image of what the jets do week in and week out you know their offense really doesn't scare anybody you feel like they have a semblance of a running game but their offensive line is hit or miss and, and it's a, like the same thing for fsu you said it uh, perfectly luby it felt like it was a 35 14 game yes. um but fsu for the first half of the game every couldn't game. handle miami up front so every time they got some momentum they got a pressure they got a sack they got a third down the yep. screen didn't work they sniffed it out they, they were in the right spots at the right time, yep. and it, it impeded them from exceeding their lead or exceeding their dominance on the game. And it kept Miami around where one play yes. was going to make a huge difference, and it did. Yes. Instead of a decapitation or a, or a concussion or an interception or at least a breakup, inexplicably, the, the FSU free safety <laughs> comes over and dives into the sideline. <laughs> he took out his own guy, actually. <laughs> to, to avoid his own guy, whereas if he plays the ball, Easy. it's it's an interception at, or it's a breakup at worst. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that was a, that was a gift kind of touchdown, but you have those things. And in rivalry games, it only takes a couple plays yes. to kind of turn the momentum around. And you felt like, oh, no. If you're an FSU fan, you're going, oh, no. Here it comes. They're, they're going to make three plays yeah. and win this game. Win the game yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, and when Tyler Van Dyke came in, you thought, well, the, there's the ending of the uh, rags to riches story where, where this guy who uh, unfortunately, you know, looked great coming in. I, I remember uh, Gene Deckeroff. We had an interview on the radio with Gene Deckeroff, and we were talking about, and, and Miami had uh, just, uh, you know, lost another game to FSU. It's a few years back. And uh, he said, yeah, but uh, you should be excited about what's going on there because you have a quarterback. Yeah, Van Dyke. And everybody thought Tyler Van Dyke was going <laughs> to emerge as, you know, and just evolve as a top-notch college quarterback. Next thing you know, he's on the bench last year. Then he gets benched again for, for this guy, Emory Williams, who, as Luby said, I, he doesn't look sensational. But, you know, you're starting a true freshman who uh, supposedly ha has a, a decent enough arm to – make you think he might ignite the passing game. Uh, that, that really wasn't the case, except for that one lucky throw. And then Van Dyke's back in the game after he gets injured uh, with a chance to go ahead and tie the game. Or I don't know that Chris DeBall would have gone for two there and just thought, hey, fuck it, you know, let me, let me see if I can win it right here. I, I, I doubt it since he plays for uh, overtime, you know, when, when he's ahead. But, uh, <laughs> or, <laughs> you know, he, he'll just uh, sit in a situation to provoke a tie. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it had all the elements of uh, being a real Cinderella story, and uh, it just fell apart like that. Uh, the big game, of course, and we welcome John Kajemi to the show. It's John Kajemi's Big Skin Playbook, brought to you by Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill, Mile Marker 104, the Overseas Highway in Key Largo. Great place to uh, hang out. We've got some uh, good weather coming up. Uh, the uh, winter season is on, so that, that place will be hopping, uh, as it does during the summertime, but even more so. And uh, so your brother's going to be very busy with Amanda and the crew down there. Yeah, and uh, Especially with the Raiders going. Going two and zero oh under the yes. new coach, so yes. that, that place will be is. hopping. Especially this week, it's the it's the Raiders that are visiting the Dolphins, so that should be exciting. Oh, nice. All right, yeah, yeah, that's going to be a good one. Maybe we uh, should get down there and uh, call Tommy Fox, see if we can do the show down there nice. uh, <laughs> <laughs> over the weekend. Uh, that would be great. But, uh, yeah, Michigan-Penn State was a big game uh, over the weekend. Uh, everybody was looking at that. Harbaugh gets suspended. I don't know, John, what you thought about all of that. Uh, they don't own some judge. In East Lansing, they could have issued a temporary <laughs> restraining order. They have to wait till Friday for a hearing. What is that all about? Yeah, and he gets on the plane, travels with the team, and has to stay at the team hotel 
uh, to watch the game on radio. There, no one on the sidelines had like a, a phone call going with Jim in, in room 232. Exactly. You, know, you don't think do? there was any what texting going on? I mean, yeah. uh, something like that. But uh, anyway. they run the ball 30 straight times before taking two knees. So it amounted to 32 consecutive runs. And uh, James Franklin fires his offensive coordinator. And it's kind of like firing the hitting coach, I think, at this stage because uh, everybody's calling for the hand of James Franklin. His record in big games is atrocious. Well, I, I, I call Penn State, and, and, it, and it endears my heart. They're, they're champions of the Big Eight, but they're playing <laughs> in the Big Ten. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's been rough sledding against Michigan and Ohio State over the last – or over James Franklin's tenure. But – um. You know, that was that was another game where you look at Penn State and put their defense on any offense in the country, and you go, this is the number one, number two team in the country. You know, you could substitute that defense with Georgia's defense or, you know, uh, a, another top-tier defense where you look at Florida State that's, you know, a good defense and, and, and can be dominant at times. But that Penn State defense is really good. Really good. And especially, you know, they're, they're not going to throw the football – they're going to run it down your throat. So you got to pack the box and it's, it's taxing on those big guys every play, but they win most of the battles and keep the team in, in the game, much like the Miami FSU game where it was like, if you get a turnover or you get something crazy that happens, it turns the game, a defensive score, you know, a scoop and score on a forced fumble, you're going to, you're going to win or you have a chance to win. Uh, Especially at home, you know, you get the crowd into it again because the offense uh, much like Miami, when it takes the field, you go, oh, as long as we can alter the field position yeah. <laughs> and, and feel like you got a long field to play with defensively, you're going to be OK. You can you can lengthen the game. And I think both of those teams tried to do that. But inevitably, the better teams won. Did Michigan show you enough in that game? And we, we don't know what will transpire. I, I'm assuming that you can get some kind of. Uh temporary injunction uh, against the suspension because uh, who, I mean, under what authority is the suspension being given? Uh, is there, you know, there hasn't been uh, even the slightest, uh, you know, bit uh, of uh, ability to counter on the part of Michigan. I mean, I know they've thrown some uh, assertions out there. Well, everybody does this. It's a bunch of bullshit, but it, it does seem like, uh, you know, without having a hearing of some sort or, uh, you know, some kind of, uh, evidentiary, uh, you know, presentation that, that how do you just suspend this guy for three games and, and come up with a definitive punishment? And, and then the NCAA itself said, well, this isn't really about Harbaugh so much. It's about the program. Right. So how, how do you come up with three games? I mean, just regular, <laughs> the rest of the regular season, I, I, evidently, but I mean, it's just three games and then you're going to have, you know, a team potentially in Michigan make the college football playoff and go to one of the major bowls to play for a chance at the national championship. And all of a sudden your head coach is going to come back in. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that if he's suspended just for the games, I don't know what happens now Monday, you know, in Ann Arbor, is he suspended from the team completely? Is no, he- a, a uh, ruling was uh, whatever that they uh, issued, at least my understanding of it was that he was allowed to work with the team in practice all during the week. He just wasn't allowed to be on the sideline for game day. So that makes a- so absolutely, what is, what is this whole thing? you know, I was talking about sense. sending the clowns. Well, the what is the point not- of that? Look, I, and I don't think they should. I think in season to do this is the stupidest thing. Like you wait till off season and you figure it out. But right. like, how are they not penalized as a team then? Like James Madison can't go to a bowl because of some Fakakta rule. But yeah. Michigan can have a coach suspended twice in the same season. We're still in the same year. He was already suspended, but they're not punished. They're allowed to go win a championship. A la Reggie Bush winning a Heisman that you take away. Like, it's, it's what it's setting up. Oh, two years. Well, we're taking away their title. Like, who gives a shit after the fact? Like... What is, what is going on with this? Like this whole thing. I don't know. Sense. I don't have a good answer for the for this one. It, <laughs> it 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 doesn't make any sense. That okay. So on on game day, Jim Harbaugh is going to decide go for it on fourth down or not. Call timeout or not. For sure. Uh, kneel down on the football or not. Um, so he's going to have about five major decisions where she could easily communicate to the bench at that particular time because his coordinators are running the game. Yeah. Uh, so it, it and now he's got full access to the team all week. So he sets up what he does like and doesn't like about the game plan versus specific coverage and teams and schemes and all that stuff. So basically you're eliminating Harbaugh, his pre, you know, his presence on the sidelines one, but his decision making in four or five uh, opportunities on game day. 
Well, it strikes me too, John, that uh, s- since he was so great at decoding signals, uh, you would think that he would also be good at devising a system where he could call somebody, uh, you know, somewhere in the stadium. What's that flashing blue yeah. light coming <laughs> from? And uh, coming from the you know, easily lot. send in whatever his decision was <laughs> or communicate it somehow to his assistant coaches. I yeah. just, it seemed absurd, uh, you know, and it also seemed bizarre. I mean, you rarely see this where. Or, and this wasn't the NCAA. This was the Big Ten that that issued the, this suspension. I know, and uh, they did it, you know, very quickly and without really, you know, outlining what it was that they specifically had in terms of evidence. Uh, I guess they had, you know, the, this assistant that was working there, and there was some evidence that he had uh, paid for tickets for people that uh, then spoke uh, of the fact that uh, they were getting paid to go ahead and, and and you know help decode the signals of the other team, but. Uh, it seemed bizarre. I mean, well, what happened to taking scholarships away where, you know, that, that was always the big fear was, oh, geez, well, we got uh, Butch Davis. Just ask him about that. How many times the uh, UM program was reprimanded for uh, various indiscretions and you know, ended up losing like 15 scholarships and, and teams would make a big deal about that, uh, you know, as if it was very inhibiting. And I, I guess in the long run, it proved out to be where yep. where programs were hit with scholarship limitations and, and did like a couple of years later, all of a sudden suffer the consequences of that. Right. So it was we're paying sort of players. We're playing payers, players millions of dollars now to play a college sport that is purely about uh, getting a scholarship and and amateur yeah. status. And now we're going to suspend uh, a coach, just a coach, not not the program um, for supposedly stealing signals. So yes, I which it wasn't really clear that that he was the man, uh, the main <laughs> right. behind that. And, and that was a weird thing. When I when I read the ruling or whatever, or saw whatever read a synopsis of it, uh, it, it said that the the accusation and the assertions were not directly, you know, at him. Jim Harbaugh, but yeah. uh, it was at the program. So uh, it, it really made no sense. But, I mean, uh, are they good enough to beat Ohio State based on what you saw, John? Uh, John they Jim? could be. They, they, they seem to be. I don't know if they can score enough points, but that defense is so good, they may stalemate Ohio State a little bit. And it always – it. it at the end of the year, guys, it always depends on a raw day or not, too, because the kicking game always plays a part. Michigan, Ohio State, how many times have you seen a missed extra point or a chip shot field goal go off and upright or, you know, weather uh, factor in and somebody slips on the outside and, and all of a sudden Marvin Harrison's running free down the sidelines for an easy score. So uh, I, I can't remember. I didn't look it up. Is it Michigan at Ohio State this year? Uh, I'm not sure where the game is. Uh, I was just thinking that, like, gee, I hope John knows where the game is because I don't. Yeah, I, I didn't look. I, no. I, I didn't look, but that that's always a, a big factor, too, going into the game, depending on where you're at and, and who's got the ball last with these offenses. You know, Michigan seems like it's going to take Michigan. them a while. It's, it's at, at Michigan. Michigan. So that saves their ass. Yeah, it's going to take a while for Michigan to score. So you would think for Michigan to win, it's ball control. It's keeping Ohio State's offense on the sidelines. Yep. Because they have probably, you know, more weapons than most teams in, in college football with a quarterback that's gotten better and a good defense. But they're they're a fast strike team or potentially a fast strike team where Michigan seems to plod their way along and they're just happy doing it and keeping, you know, that that potent offense on the sidelines. That's that that would be how Michigan would want to win the game in a in a twenty one seventeen type of game where they control the ball. They control um, how many opportunities Ohio State has to kick the can in the end zone. And the other way, Ohio State wants to make it a track meet. Yep. They want to be on the field. They want to three plays, 57 seconds off the clock, 7 nothing Ohio State, get the ball back, yep. you know, and let's do, uh, do it again. I only had a situation that, that would sort of be close to this once in, in my lifetime, and I've told Luby this since the day I met him that my dream would be to sign a big guaranteed contract and get fired the first day on like a five-year lucrative deal with some radio station or television outlet. Uh, I didn't have to sit out a six-month non-compete. I, I don't know. It was questionable whether it was enforceable, but uh, and, and that was great. I was getting paid. I, I just uh, received a huge boost in salary when I went to WQAM from WIOD, and, and the guy said, listen, I, I don't want to bother challenging this, so why don't you just you know hang around the station for six months and and we'll put you on the air when this thing is over. I thought, wow, this is great, man. I mean, it couldn't be a better time because there were only so many times you were going to show up at the station and go, hey, yeah, good show, guys, <laughs> <laughs> if you're not on it. <laughs> but this Jimbo Fisher thing, uh, I mean, 
I I understand. I mean, uh, it's happened before and it'll happen again. But I mean, wouldn't you think uh, universities, uh, how much money is really at stake here when you can afford to dump a guy and give him seventy five million dollars to go away? I don't know. I it's it it almost seems like it it shouldn't happen that way because you you get the the board in a in a in a meeting room and they're actually everybody's nodding their head. Yes. Yeah. We should just we should cut our losses at seventy five million and we should. (laughs) We should let him walk away. <laughs> right. and everybody's going. Yeah, I agree with that guy. It was like a semi-pro. I agree with both of both of those guys. I, I don't. I don't understand how you can you can do that. Um, and it's not like all of a sudden five years ago they thought Jimbo Fisher was the smartest guy walking the planet, coaching college football, and now he's the dumbest. And well, and, and he had all those recruiting million. classes too. I mean, yeah, that they was the other thing. well. They've done well, what you're supposed to do to win. I know. So, so what does the next guy get? I mean, what is the, what does the next guy get in his contract? Imagine you know, saying, uh, you know, as you're, uh, you know, negotiating this, you're the attorney for whatever coach is coming in there and going, wait a minute, you're paying the guy 75 million, not to, to leave. You. <laughs> to leave. I want at least that to start. Yeah. To start. Yeah. And, and it's, um, and it won't be, you know, like you said, it won't, it's not the first time and it won't be the last, No. but I don't know how many more schools would want to hire uh, a big time coach paying big time money on the length of the contracts that they give these guys. And all of a sudden feel like you can't ride it out. Well, I, well, a couple backtrack a couple, I guess a month, month and a week. How do you think Miami board of regions felt when they were going, all we had to do is kneel on the ball. We're going to lead the ACC. We might be able to play for the ACC title the way the dominoes have fallen. And we're paying this guy X and millions of dollars. And he, can't 115 114 113 Where, where's the clock yeah you know, all we have to do is kneel on the ball but to get out of that contract you're probably talking you know probably half of what jimbo yeah, it's like 50, had. 40, 50, yeah but but you know it's crazy that, yeah. what these guys are getting paid and and you you've got a guy that steps in for michigan that supposedly you know is the head coach of the day and now he's gonna you know He's going to get a job, whether it's in college football or whether it goes with Jim Harbaugh when he gets hired by the Bears or the, wherever wherever he's going to go. You're thinking that's the easiest solution for uh, Harbaugh, right? I mean, uh, yeah, yeah I guess just stay. Uh, uh, enough stay? of this shit and uh, go take a deal in the pros somewhere and uh, join his brother uh, John Harbaugh and see what uh, can happen. All right, we're going to come back and talk. So, so uh, where, where are we at? I mean, Georgia looked really good. Uh, you would have to still say Alabama. Say, looks Alabama really with this, uh, good. Milrow. Wow, yeah. that that's a, a great story, uh, John. So happy uh, they they hung with that kid. He's the best one of the bunch. They just needed to get him, you know, get him playing, get him going, li- trim the mistakes because the mistakes weren't inter- incompletes. They were interceptions early in the year, and I think that's a team that's hitting their stride. And Georgia still looks good, but they're. I don't know if, if somebody gets them on the right day that can that can play with them on the line of scrimmage. They're going to they're going to upset Georgia. Saban is uh, crystal ball in reverse. I, I don't know. Maybe Tyler Van Dyke is not that great of a player. It's possible. It, it seemed like he had massive potential, as uh, Gene Deckeroff alluded to. I, I still I can I hear his voice in my head. The great Gene Deckeroff saying, uh, hey, you got a quarterback, you got a quarterback. That's all you need in this game. And, and I thought, all right. I didn't even know what he was talking about at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I'd seen Van Dyke. I'm like, really? I mean, he believes that that highly in this kid. That That's fantastic. But uh, Saban, with what he did with Milrow, I mean, he had him on the bench. And, and then he brings him back. And it was under shaky circumstances, you thought. And then, sure enough, uh, he's developed into a top flight player all of a sudden. Looks very much uh, like you would have seen from uh, Tagovailoa or uh, Jalen Hurts when he was at yeah, Alabama. He looks great. He looks yes. great. That's a team that's dangerous right now. Very dangerous. Coming on. It's a shame to say it. And now uh, they are uh, definitely meeting Georgia in the SEC championship game. Is Both that not true? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, I think they're so, locked in, but I mean, for them to be in a playoff kind of they, match. They may represent a real threat there where you would have thought that this was uh, just uh, a walkover for Georgia. A couple of. Maybe three, four weeks back. The Canes did show life. I don't know what that means because they were disaster versus Georgia Tech, Virginia, and NC State. All three teams that are worse than the the Seminoles. So, yes, their defense played strong. Their young quarterback didn't make mistakes. Um, He 
wasn't good. <laughs> he was 8 for 23, so it wasn't anything right home about. But he didn't hand the game over, which I guess Tyler Van Dyke does do. But Tyler Van Dyke also gives you a chance to make big plays. And yeah, Emory Williams chucked one down the field. And Florida State's defensive back took out its other defensive back. So they got a big touchdown. But you weren't going to be able to count on those plays. With Emory Williams at quarterback. It was a close game on the scoreboard. But Florida State did control the entire second half. They're, they moved the ball up and down the field. Mike Norvell and Travis, Jordan Travis, for some reason are screwing around in the scoring area, not the 20, inside the 40. I, I don't know what they're doing play-calling-wise once they get there, but it allowed the game to look closer than, to me, it really was. Uh, but Miami did play its best game in a while. What does that mean? I don't know, <laughs> because they do have to play uh, Boston College and do have to play Louisville. Uh, Louisville, who's actually ranked below FSU, but playing really well at this point. And then Boston College is also playing really well at this point. We'll see how Miami... Finishes the season, Florida State, a 10-0. They take on North Alabama, then they take on the Gators, and they are bookmarked for the AC Championship game where it feels like they'll play Louisville. So we'll see how their season wraps up. The Miami Dolphins did have a bye week, and they won the bye week. People joke around when they won, win or lose. They won. The Bills now lost after Monday night in a crazy affair. So they're 5-5 five and five now, so that gives the Dolphins even more of a lead. The Jets lost. You had the Bengals lose. You had the Ravens lose. You had... Uh, all those teams that were nipping at the Dolphins' heels or the Dolphins had been surpassed by, supposedly, lose while the Dolphins were off. So it was a, a good bye week for the Dolphins. They now take on the Raiders, who honor two-game win streak, but they will be at home versus a Raiders team that is trying to figure things out. So that's good to see. So we'll talk a lot more about the Dolphins. We'll talk a lot more about them. Heat, four wins in a row, sitting there above 500 right now. You have Duncan Robinson playing the best ball of his career, not just a three-point shooter which is weird to see. Butler's sort of playing around, but playing good enough. No hero, but Bam has really asserted himself finally on the offensive side of the ball and on the glass, two things we knew he could do, and we saw flashes of he's been doing it pretty consistently this season. And you have the Miami Heat right there with the Milwaukee Bucks. Huh, interesting how things work out. It is a regular season. We'll see how the season turns out. It feels like the Heat still are not, and also Hawkins has played really well. I don't know what's going on with Jovich. Maybe we'll have to get Scoop himself, Mr. Ethan Skolnick, on with us in the near future, figure out what's going on more with Miami Heat. But so far, the Heat have weathered that early one and four storm and are playing pretty good basketball. Or maybe they've won five in a row. Yeah, because they were one and four. Now I think they're six and four. So good for them. Five in a row for that Miami Heat contingent. We'll talk more Miami Heat. We'll talk more Miami Dolphins. We'll talk more Miami Hurricanes and all things South Florida sports. Check us out each and every morning. The Diva Show with Lou Beyonce South Florida Live. Check us out on our new national show on the Tony Bruno Sports Network from 10 to 12. We do our show from 8 to 9 each and every morning. We also are doing some special fun conversations on the Believe Network, BLEAV.com. Search after hours and nofilter.net. Also, we do more just he and I talking national stuff, short podcasts, nofilter.net, or go to Caffeine TV or Google search Caffeine TV in the morning briefing. But our South Florida SKU content. Right here for you all, the Default Show with Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network. From the newly renovated sports bar to the beautiful bayside views captured at the Tiki Bar, Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill has it all. Located at mile marker 104, the Big Chill also offers waterfront dining while experiencing breathtaking sunset views of the Florida Keys. It's simply the hottest spot in the Keys to cool off. That's Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill at mile marker 104 in Key Largo. For more information, call today at 305-453-9066. These days, we're all looking for comfort anywhere we can find it. Thank goodness for Landlubbers, Raw Bar and Grill in the plantation because they are making sure you are as comfortable as possible. First of all, they're not only open for delivery and pickup. All you have to do is go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both pickup and free delivery. You're going to have the best wings in the world. You're going to have a great burger. You're going to have their amazing soups. Again, Landlubbers, Raw Bar, and Grill. It's nice and easy. Just go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both your pickup and free delivery. Thank goodness for Landlubbers for making you always feel right at home. 